Okay, so how is everyone today? Good, I hope. Any questions before we get to business? Okay, so the last thing that we talked about last time was uh, the following. Let M and N be in the naturals. Uh, and M and N have no common factors. Okay, so in such a case, the following are equivalent. First, that y equal to nth root of x, and then all of that raised to exponent m, so that one is equivalent to, well, y is, we can keep these round parentheses all to exponent m, we can keep that, but then we can express the radical in a different way. How can we express the radical in a, in a different way? Very good. x to 1 over n. That's, this is just by definition. They're the same. And then uh, 3. Here's the new one. y to exponent uh, m divided by n. So combining those two exponents in that way. <coughs> So, for example, I could say evaluate without a calculator. Negative uh, 27 to exponent 4 over 3. So what do we need to do? <laughs> okay, good. I'll write it in the second form. So this is equal to uh, writing it in the second form. Uh, well, first we'll take negative 27 and raise that to exponent one third. And then after we've done that, and the way I'll say, you know, the way you make it say after, after you've done that, we'll raise the result to exponent four. Well, can we do negative twenty seven to exponent one third? Yes. yes. That that means compute the cube root of negative twenty seven. Well, what is the cube root of negative 27? Three. Negative 3, right? Because if you had three copies of negative 3, if you had three of them, and you multiplied the first two together, what would you get? 9, positive 9. And then multiply by the last negative 3, you get negative 27. So this would be negative 3 to exponent Four. And then what is negative 3 to exponent 4? 81. Because that's saying, suppose you have four copies of negative 3. You multiply the first two together, that's 9. You multiply the last two together, that's another 9. And then you multiply the two 9s together, that's 81. Any question about that? I think I'm interested in why you chose It, they're all they're equivalent. Yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah. So it it would just as well it would just as well uh, have served to do to do it this way.
that would be just as fine and it would put you uh, exactly there it'd be just fine <clears throat> other questions so if we wanted to type If we wanted to type that expression into the calculator, so this one right here, how do you type that into the calculator? That one. So you'd have to write negative 2, 7 in parentheses, then what? Carrot. Carrot. Then what? Uh huh. Very good. Now suppose we type that into the calculator. So I'll type it. Negative 2, 7, caret, 4 over 3. What's the calculator going to say? <laughs> it's going to say, boom, I exploded. Ah, well. What does this mean? Uh, in this case, what's happening is that most calculators, not all, but most calculators will fail on this expression. And that is because, well, actually it's because of a technical reason that I won't really get into. It has to do with the floating point representation, the approximate floating point representation of four thirds. Uh, and then as a result of that, there's a parity issue. Uh, and it causes a, the calculator thinks that there's a domain error. Uh, however, this is the answer. The calculator, is yours able to do it? Yeah, mine. So, uh, most calculators ca cannot do it. Uh, so I, I very often uh, ask a question like this uh, because it makes, makes it to where a student has to show all of the individual steps. And furthermore, any of you who depend on your calculator, I can flush you out uh, with this kind of exercise. Any questions about this? Yes? Right. Okay. All of these are equivalent. Okay. Right. But, but to evaluate something that is like this, you've got to use one of these two. Right. So then we were, we were requested to evaluate something that is like three. But in order to do that, we had to use either two or one. Yeah. Other questions? OK. Good. So now we're in the section 1.4. which is called polynomials. A slight remark about uh, language. The word polynomial literally means many names. Like m many as in like a multitude. Uh, so we'll have occasion to use three other, uh, three other terms that are like polynomial. The first one is monomial. That N is uh, serving double duty. Uh, mon, in this case, being a prefix that means one. And then the N is reused, <laughs> one name. We'll also use the phrase, the word binomial and trinomial. Okay. 
And then for for bigger than try, meaning three, we'll just use poly. Okay. So here's the definition of a polynomial. And from now on, when I write, when, I'm, when I talk about polynomials in this class, I'm just going to write poly. So definition of a polynomial, let n be in the naturals. No, in fact, I guess I need n to be in the whole numbers. No, I'll just leave it naturals. I'll make it work. Uh, let n be in the naturals. So a polynomial uh, of degree n in variable x is an expression of the form okay so a subscript n multiplied by x to exponent n and then plus a subscript n minus 1 multiplied by x to exponent n minus 1. And then plus ellipsis, which is the fancy name for dot, 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 uh, to a subscript 1 times x. Now, uh, so here I'd like for you to observe that that subscript n and that's exponent n and that's subscript n minus 1 and that's exponent n minus 1. Now uh, that subscript 1, what's the exponent for this x? 1, right? Because when you don't write it it's understood to be 1. So this is still 1 and 1. Uh, finally then plus a 0. Uh, and it needs to be the case that a subscript n is not zero. Okay, now that line is a mouthful. Uh, so let me give you a concrete example. So something like a subscript 2 multiplied by x to exponent 2 plus a subscript 1 multiplied by x plus a zero. Okay, and then for example, uh, how about 13 multiplied by x squared plus 14 multiplied by x plus 2018. Abolish. Any question about? Uh, about this. <clears throat> okay. So uh, these numbers that are in front, 13, not including the x squared, and 14, not including the x, and then 2018. So each of those numbers is referred to as a coefficient. And then now, it's like we're adding together three items, the first item, the second item, and the third item. Each of the items, that is to say, for example, this one, 13 x squared, so now I am including the x squared, and 14 x and 20 18. Each 
each one of those is called a term. So, uh, that means that 2018 uh, is both considered to be a coefficient and a term. Whereas this one, uh, the coefficient is 13 and the term is 13x squared. Okay, so each, uh, so for each term, uh, the exponent uh, is called its degree. So, 13 multiplied by x squared plus 14 multiplied by x plus 20 18. What's the degree of this term? 2. And this one? 1. Because again, there's the exponent is not written, so it's understood to be 1. And then, what's the degree of this one? 0. Now that's by definition, but you can think of it like there's an implicit multiply by x to exponent 0. What is x to exponent 0? It's 1, unless x is 0 and then 0 to 0 is undefined, which is why that this is by definition. Okay. So uh, for, for a given polynomial, The maximum degree of all its terms is called the degree of the polynomial. Okay, so again, how about 13 multiplied by x squared plus 14 multiplied by x plus 2018? What's the degree of this polynomial? Mm -hmm. What about uh, what about this one? Five times w squared uh, plus uh, eight times w plus uh, I don't know seven. <coughs> kind of mumbled there for a second, huh? So what's the what's the degree of this one? I thought it was supposed to be 2, the one that's all the way to the left. Ah, it's the maximum of all of them, right? It's the maximum of all of them. Any question about uh, this? Okay. Oops. So a polynomial uh, 
Ah, uh, no, let's, let's back that up just a little bit. Terms are said to be alike when they have the same degree. So, for example, uh, I don't know, 5 <laughs> times w squared plus 3 times w plus 8 times w plus 10. Are there any terms that are alike? 3w and 8w, right? So these are alike? What about, what about these two? Are they alike? Okay, well what about this one? What if I do, what if I do uh, 5z squared plus 5 uh, Z. Those are alike, right? But the fives. Ah, uh, but the degrees aren't the same, right? So these are these are not these two, these two are not alike because the degrees are not the same. So uh, alike terms. can be added. Uh, well, better to say collected. It's a better word. So specifically, you could do something like 5w squared plus 3 times w plus 8 times w plus 10. So those two terms in the middle are alike. So the fact that they're alike means that they can be treated like in the, gr in the, in the grade school way. This is like saying uh, Susie has three apples in one hand and eight hands, uh, sorry, eight apples in the other hand because she has enormous hands. Uh, so how many apples does uh, Susie have altogether? 11, right? So then we could collect those together and say uh, 5w squared plus 11w plus 10. Okay, so a polynomial is in standard form. I realize that this is really boring, but here's the thing. We have to define all this language so that we can have a quick and efficient conversation about polynomials because to a significant extent, uh, college algebra is a lot about polynomials. So we've got to have, we've got to have an efficient language to talk about it. Uh, a polynomial is in standard form when All terms are in descending order of degree <coughs> which is stilted math language for saying biggest degree first. alike terms collected. OK. 
okay? So, uh, for example, uh, how about, uh, what was that one on the previous page? That one. Five W squared plus eight W cubed plus seven. So is this one in standard form? No. Why not? Of degree, right? So then which term needs to come first? 8w cubed. And then next, 5w squared. And then 7. Similarly, how about uh, 6y plus uh, 9y squared plus 5y minus uh, 8? So is this in standard form? No. Because uh, the, the terms are out of order. OK, so I'll put them in order. 9 times y squared plus 6 times y uh, plus 5 times y minus 8. Ah, now we have it, right? Ah, oh, like terms, okay. That too. Uh, 9 times y squared plus 11 times y minus 8. Good. By the way, uh, so, here's a polynomial. How many, uh, how many terms are in that polynomial? Two, right? So then uh, the special name for such a circumstance is you call this a binomial. And here, uh, how many terms? Three, so this one is a trinomial. Okay, it'll always be right for you to call it a polynomial, but I, I will at times say binomial, and I want to make sure you understand what I mean when I say it. Uh, standard form. Okay, so then uh, when written in standard form, written in standard form, Uh, the term of highest degree of maximum degree is called the leading term coefficient of same <coughs> term is called the leading coefficient. term without a variable is called two things. <laughs> it is called the constant term and it is also called the constant coefficient. So for example, uh, this polynomial right here, what is its uh, leading coefficient? Nine. And what's its leading term? Nine y squared. Good. Any question about all this boring language? Yes? 
Constant. Yeah. Okay. Finally, separate remark before we can get on to making some computations. Uh, this is the distingu This is two words are bandied about a lot in math class: term versus factor. So two words. Uh, they ha they mean different things, but. If you listen to a smattering of math videos on YouTube, uh, my impression is is that the people on YouTube talking about math are not sure what the difference between these two words is. So let's make it clear. So uh, terms are added. So like A plus B plus C. In such a case, A, B, and C are all called terms. Whereas factors are multiplied. Like A multiply B multiply C. So it has, to, it has to do with what you're doing with them, what they're called in such a case. So uh, terms and factors. Terms are added. Factors are multiplied. And uh, to help you remember the distinction, I'll just note that the word term starts with a T, and pluses kind of look like Ts. Mm, how about that? Interesting. Any question about this? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so for example, uh, how about 5 times x squared, and then this will multiply by um, 3 times x to 4 plus, uh, I don't know, 7? <coughs> Something like that. Uh, and the instructions are to expand. <coughs> Showing all distributions and commutations. Can someone remind me what commute means? Drive the car. <laughs> to drive, to get here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to move things around. Okay, so in the first place, uh, fine. We need to perform a distribution. We could take this, and then you get a 5x squared, and you get a 5x squared. Terrific. So if we do that, then 5 times x squared, and then multiplied by 3 times x squared. Ah, uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. 3 times x to 4, and then plus. 5 times x squared 
multiplied by 7. So to head off a question, I'll first remark it. Wow, isn't this tedious what we're doing? Yeah, it's tedious. Are you going to have to do it at least once? Yeah, you're going to have to do it at least once. Are you going to have to do it every time? No, you're not going to have to do it every time. OK, so uh, we can drop the parentheses. Why can we drop the parentheses? Fishing for an A word. Associative. Associative. OK, so 5 multiplied by x squared multiplied by 3 multiplied by x to 4 plus 5 multiplied by x squared multiplied by 7. Okay, and we want to simplify this uh, term. So have a look. In this expression, th the whole thing, there's two terms. There's that term, all of that's a term, and that term, all of that's a term. And then within the first term, how many factors are there? <coughs> Four factors. And in the second term, there's three factors. So for the first term, how can we, how can we work on the first term? What, what do you mean? OK. So I'm fishing for a C word. Ah, we've got a commute, right? So let me say it this way. I I'm sh feel quite certain that y'all understand that eventually this term, its coefficient is going to be what? 15. But the purpose of this exercise and these instructions is for you to show me every little step why it's got to be 15. Okay, so, so to get there, to get there, well, we could write that this is 5 multiply 3 multiply x squared multiply x to 4. So what did we do? So we'll do something with that term in a moment. But what did we do with this term? Right. So specifically, we commuted the x and the 3. They commuted. They switched sides. They moved. Okay, and then similarly, what will, we, what will we write for the other term? Very good. That is to say we're commuting the x squared and the 7. Okay, so then now we can, we can, we can do it. 5 times 3 is what? 15, of course. Then what do we do about this? Add exponents, right? Because after all, this is a counting game. This is saying two copies of x in product, four followed by four copies of x in product. So altogether, that's six of them. Uh, then plus 35 multiply x squared. Any question about this one? OK, so under normal circumstances that aren't like this, uh, what I would expect you to do is something like this. So suppose we had um, 7 uh, times w squared, and we were going to multiply it by, say, uh, 10 times w plus 5 times w to 20 9. I just want you to just multiply it out. So the instruction now is just expand. Not expand showing all distributions and commutations. Just just do it, right? And when you're comfortable with this, uh, you, you can do it all in one step, I think. So the 7w squared will distribute to the first term. And then after all simplification, what do you get? Very good. 70w cubed. Uh, and then the 7w squared distributes to the second term, and what do you get? Very good. Coefficient 35, degree 31. Any 
question about this one. This is okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, fine. For example, what about uh, 5 times x plus 3, and then this multiplied by 2 times x plus 7? So again, this is a binomial, because it's got two terms in it. And that's a binomial, because it has two terms in it. So this is the product of two binomials. And wow, this looks complicated, so we're going to have to go back to basics. So the way we'll do it is I'll say, OK, we're going to distribute this one. So specifically, the instructions are expand, showing all distributions. So 5x plus 3, I'm going to distribute it. right? So you get a 5x plus 3, and you get a 5x plus 3. OK, doing that. Five x plus three uh, multiplied by two x and then plus five x plus three multiplied by seven. Now what? Ah, more distributions, right? Because the first round was so fun. Let's do it again. So now we're going to distribute the 2x to the left, right? You get a 2x, and you get a 2x. And also, we'll distribute the 7. You get a 7, and you get a 7. I feel like I'm asking a, a dumb question. Why is it just because the, the, the term is smaller? You're choosing the smaller and it's easy to distribute? Well, is, OK. So are you asking a question about this? Are you asking a question about yeah, this? Right. I mean, yes. I'm about well, the reason is because of that plus. Okay. So, so, so that is whatever it is. That could be a banana in there. But this is something plus 3. Mm -hmm. So is, this is the distribution of, of that product mm -hmm. over that sum. That's why. So doing this this one into that one instead of the other way around, that was arbitrary. But this one, because this is a sum, it distributes that way. OK. So then now, that way, uh, 5 times, well, we said, I didn't say I show all the commutations. So we can just do this. So uh, 2x times 5x is what? 10x squared. 10x squared. Uh, then 2x times 3 is 6x. And then, as for this one, uh, 7 times 5x is 35x. And then 7 times 3 is 21. Now, do we have, is, is, the, is our answer in standard form? In what manner is it not in standard form? Very good. So we'll combine those middle ones. 10 times x squared plus 41 times x plus 21. OK. Well, as it happens, multiplying, computing the product of two binomials is so common of occurrence, so common of an occurrence, that it has a nice formula, and we're going to figure out what that formula is right now, yes? So here we go. This is the product of binomials formula. Product of binomials formula. And then what's its name, for those of you who know it? Foil. In height. So if we have a plus b multiplied by 
C plus D. Well, I can't use FOIL to talk about FOIL. We've got to figure it out. So, it's exactly the same as above. We distribute this one to that one. And I'll do it super quick. So that would be A plus B multiplied by C plus A plus B multiplied by D. So now we'll distribute the other direction because again, this is product over sum, but going to the left. That's my, we're gonna have a quiz alarm. Don't worry, it's very easy. So we'll distribute this way. A times C plus B times C plus A times D plus B times D. And then for reasons that won't be clear until after I write it, I'm going to commute the two terms in the middle. A times C plus A times D plus B times C plus B times D. So the first and last term stayed in their positions, but the middle terms commuted. So now, concerning this binomial, just that one right there, there, it has two terms, A and B. Which one is first? And for this one, which one is first? So A and C are first. As a result, we're going to refer to this as the F term because it is the product of the firsts. Similarly, in this binomial, which one is last? B, and in this one, D. So B and D are the lasts, so we'll refer to this one as L for last. And then taking this expression as a whole, do you observe that A and D are on the outsides? So we'll refer to this term AD as the O term. And then what are we going to call B and C? The insides. So we refer to this as the I term. And for that reason, it's nice to remember this formula. It's called FOIL, but in the end, all it is is three distributions and a commutation. One, two, three, and a commutation. Okay, so please put away your things. We'll have a quiz now. It was very, very easy.